What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Total Takedown. This is UFC 278 where we go back over the fight card talking overs and unders. How long are these fights going to last? Can you make any additional cash betting on this fight to go over or under the posted total? We are using Super Book Sports for these totals. Make sure you check them out and of course subscribe here to Pub Sports Radio. The first fight of the evening is going to be Victor Altamirano taking on Daniel Lacerda. Daniel De Silva, everyone's got him posted at a different name. The total is set at two and a half for this one. Over two and a half is plus 145. Under two and a half is minus 165. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I feel like I missed the boat. I wanted to jump on this under two and a half a little earlier in the week. It's taken some steam. I'm surprised that Superbook is hanging a minus 165. I'm seeing minus 175s and minus 185s around the market. People do not expect this fight to go the distance. They don't expect this fight to hit the two round mark. I can understand. Daniel has a tendency of uh, kind of being a killer be killed finisher bust early on in the fight type of fighter. That being the case, you can expect him to kill or be killed pretty quickly. And the way Victor cranks up the intensity, the longer the fight goes and the fact that we're at altitude, I can see either of these guys getting a finish. So I like that under. Uh, we've got Jason Perrin taking on Aori Kui Lang in the next fight. Total again at 2.5. The over is minus 200. The under is plus 175. The over makes sense to me here. The over makes sense because both these guys are primary wrestlers. Aori Kui Lang probably hits a little harder. He's maybe a little bit more vicious. But Jason Perrin's got a freaking brick for a head. That guy, we've seen him take flush shots, eats them, comes in, changes levels, no problem. So again, we worry about the elevation, the gas tank. And you wonder if this is going to turn into a sloppy wrestling match. I'm not sure either guy will have the energy or uh, be compromised enough at the end of this fight to go ahead and get that finish. I think the over makes some sense. Francisco Figueredo taking on Amir Albazi. The total set at 2.5 for this one. Over is minus 140. Under is plus 120. And I don't think I want to play this one. You know, for the purpose of the show, obviously, I've got to give you my pick over or under. But I think Amir Albazi can win this fight pretty much any way he wants to. Now, Francisco Figueredo, we saw him get a knee bar over Daniel Lacerda in his last fight. So it makes sense that he could, you know, contribute to that under, potentially speaking. But Amir Albazi, I think he's got him hedged basically everywhere. Better striking, better wrestling, better jiu-jitsu, better cardio. Like, if Amir wants to take this guy down, rough him up, force him to give up his neck and choke him out, I think he can. If Amir wants to box him up on the feet... Maybe clip him and rock him and put him out. I think he can. If he wants to grind him and Francisco Figueredo's made some improvements and is defensively solid and hangs in there and it goes to the decision, I think it can. <laughs> so I'm going to lean on, I think, the over two and a half, but I just don't trust this one. I wouldn't be shocked at all if Amir Albazi comes out, shows us a new level, and finishes this kid. Angelusa taking on AJ Fletcher in the next fight. Total again at two and a half. The over minus 170. The under is plus 150. And this one's frustrating for me because Angelusa could absolutely end this fight at any point in the night. AJ Fletcher's shown off a good chin, good cardio, good pace. So you got to think if it goes over, AJ Fletcher is probably in control. But the takedown defense of Lusa is going to force AJ Fletcher to engage on the feet. And that's where Lusa's going to have his opportunity to land a big haymaker. He's got some power. He's big. He's explosive. He is strong. I kind of think it's a little binary. Under you're thinking AJ, over you're thinking AJ. So pick your poison, folks. I'm going to lean ever so slightly with the over, I think. I'm, I'm not touching this one, though. I promise you that. Shannon Young taking on Miranda Maverick in the next fight. Total again at 2.5. The over is minus 120. The under is plus 100. Now, this is a rematch. We saw this fight end in the first minute of the first fight. Uh, Shannon Young came out, bopped Miranda on the head, sat her down, and then Miranda immediately had to shift into grappling mode, took Shanna's back, and tapped her out almost immediately. A lot of people are expecting the same kind of thing to happen. I am a big subscriber of the fact that no two fights are ever alike, so I think that the improvements that both these women have made, I expect this fight to be a little bit more competitive. Shannon Young's putting some serious work in on her takedown defense game. She is big, she's strong, she's cutting down to a new weight class here, so after getting some experience and, you know, really kind of rounding out her game plan, I think she can put up a little bit better of a fight here, but that said, I don't necessarily know that that's going to be enough for this fight to go the distance, because if Shannon Young wins this fight, I doubt it's winning minutes. Miranda Maverick doesn't stop. She's training at elevation with, you know, Raquel Pennington. Like, she is not going to get deterred by one tough take down. So she's going to keep on coming and she's going to keep grinding. If this goes over, it's because Miranda Maverick is winning a decision and it's because she can't get the back of Shannon Young or can't get off on ground and pound. If this fight hits the mat, Miranda Maverick's 
so much more advanced. I expect her to get the finish if it hits the ground. If it stays standing, I don't think Shannon Young can defend for 15 straight minutes and still win the fight. Like, I think she'll lose on the judges' scorecards if she does that. So, I kind of feel like Shannon Young needs a finish here. Now, she is more than capable of getting a finish. This chick hits hard. So, I kind of think the under makes sense. But women's MMA, plus 100, even money on an under 2.5. Oh, that's a tough sell. I'm going to lean with the under here, but I don't like the price tag. Now, I said that last week, you know, about... Uh, Priscilla Cachuera and Ariane Lipsky, and that fight was over in about 15 seconds. So the plus 140, I guess, made more sense than I gave it credit for, even though I picked the under last week. Hey, plus 100, if you want to roll those dice again here this week, you go right ahead, my friend. I think the under is probably the play. I just would like a little bit more juice on it. Luis Saldana taking on Sean Woodson. Another two and a half total. It's going to be two and a half basically all day on this card until we get a little further on with some of these bigger fighters. Over two and a half is minus 145. The under two and a half is plus 125. Another one where I can make an argument for the under. I don't trust Luis Saldana's gas tank. That's really my big issue. He's got decent jujitsu. A lot of his regional scene wins came by submission. And we have seen Sean Woodson submitted. But Sean is so damn big. These guys both like to strike at range. Play the outside. Use the footwork. Use the reach. Except Sean Woodson just has Luis Saldana beat in every aspect of that game. He also hits harder. So I think this is going to be a Woodson or pass type of situation. And I know we're talking totals. We're supposed to be talking overs and unders. But I have a hard time seeing Luis Saldana hanging in there for a 15-minute beating with Sean Woodson. I think eventually the gas tank, which we've seen be a problem in the past with Luis Saldana, eventually falls out, and then Sean Woodson takes advantage of it. I'd rather play Sean Woodson inside the distance personally, but if you want that under 2.5 plus 125, if Luis Saldana comes out and does something crazy, you at least have some exposure to that being covered by that number. I'd be playing violence here. Jared Gordon taking on Leonardo Santos, total again at 2.5, over minus 140, under is plus 120, and Leo Santos is another gasser. He's another guy that comes out hard early in fights, busts people up. He almost had Clay Guida out of there. He can finish pretty much anybody in this division. Jared Gordon really relies on his toughness, his durability, his grappling, his wrestling, his pace to get it done, and Leonardo Santos is exactly the kind of opponent that can fall victim to that. If he does not leave himself an escape rope, if he empties his tank again like he did last fight, then Jared Gordon probably TKOs him at some point in this fight. The under two and a half makes a little bit of sense to me, plus 120. I don't have a problem with that. Now, could Leo Santos come out and, I don't know, teep kick Jared Gordon for 15 minutes, keep him away, keep him at range, hurt him once or twice so Jared doesn't really want to dive in on him and win a bad decision? Yeah, he could. Could Jared Gordon, you know, take a beating in round one, survive, and then just barely be able to get the takedown in round two and, and stretch this fight out and get the nod in round three after being able to uh, grappling positionally dominate a bigger, larger Leo Santos? Yeah, he could. This isn't a total that I'm super excited about. If you're going to play the under or violence, again, there's inside the distance props, there's knockout props, they just pay better. So I wouldn't play the under two and a half at plus 120, I don't think, but that's how I'm going to pick it. Alexander Romanov taking on Marcin Tybura. Total set at one and a half. The over is minus 190. The under is plus 170. And, and this is chalked up. This one was a little bit better earlier in the week. But I would be looking at the over one and a half. Minus 190 is pricey. It'd be scary and dangerous, especially with Alexander Romanov. But this is such a massive step up in competition. He's fought nobody like Marcin Tybura. Tybura is a tough guy to put away. He's been knocked out earlier in his career, but he's made some changes. He's been far more competitive of late. He's been tough. He's been durable. The chin problems seem to not be as much of an issue anymore. And Alexander Romanov is mostly a wrestler. He's a guy that throws people across the cage, picks them up, slams them. That's going to be a tough task with someone as big, heavy, and as talented as Marcin Taibura. He knows how to defend takedowns. He knows how to get up from bottom. He's going to make Alexander Romanov work. So I kind of feel like this one is going to be your big sloppy heavyweight over. I think we get over that one and a half round mark, and then something happens at the end of this fight. Who ends up going down or whether Romanov wins a, a decision at the end of this thing? I'm not sure, but I do think we can get over one and a half rounds. I just don't know if I want to pay minus 190 to get there. The same exact situation, the opposite way in this next fight. Harry Huntsucker, Tyson Pedro, total again at one and a half. The over is plus 320. The under on this one is minus 380. So we are looking at a almost minus 400 under one and a half. Now that makes sense because Harry Huntsucker is 0-3 in the UFC. 
all three of those losses by first round knockout, including his contender series fight. Like this guy just doesn't go to round two. And even if he did go to round two, you still got two minutes and 30 seconds with that under one and a half round mark. Tyson Pedro seems to be legit. The skill gap here is absolutely insane. Harry Huntsucker is dropping down to 205, something to bear in mind. He might maybe get a little bit of a boost by doing that, but I still don't think that the way he fights really lends itself to the over. Even if he is better at 205, even if he's not sucked out, he's not drained, he's better off at 205, he probably still mostly just wins by round one knockout if he's going to. So no matter who gets this thing done, I think it's early. I can't argue against the minus 380 price tag on it. Under one and a half is the way we're going to look. No way I'm betting it though. Lucy Pudilova taking on Wu Yanan. Total again at two and a half. This is more of your average women's MMA total. Over is minus 360. The under is plus 300. Now, see, this is that price tag where I'd be like, hmm, hmm, and maybe we try to find a way to go under that, but there's no way. Both these women are pillow-fisted, uh, high pace fighters, and because of that, there's really no threat for a finish on either side of them when it comes to punching. Lucy pudilova has been finished by submission once, and we have seen Wu Yan on grapple, so I do think maybe there's a shot at that armbar finish. But that's the only way this fight finishes. I don't think Lucy Pudilova is TKOing Wu Yanan. And the same thing on the opposite side. I find it hard to believe that Wu would TKO Lucy. I think it's going to take everything she's got to hold her down if she does get the grappling going. Hits armbar or bust. So again, play Wu Yanan by sub at 11, 12 to 1. Or don't bet the under 2.5. That's the only way I can look at it for this one. It's probably going over. Maybe a split decision. <laughs> Murad Vashvili taking on Jose Aldo. Total at two and a half, over is minus 220, under is plus 195. I've been bouncing back and forth on this one all week. I think I have to say over. You know, we've seen Jose Aldo still's got that pop in his punches. He's got that phenomenal takedown defense. He's got the athleticism. He is big for this weight class. Marab just does not stop. The thing for me, Jose Aldo, unless he's the one finishing this fight by knockout, we've only seen him finished by Jan in round five. And he looked fine for the first two rounds of that fight. Even in his last couple fights, when he has started showing signs of slowing down, it's been in that third round, and he's only got to survive like three minutes when he's gassed out and he's starting to get tired before he finally manages to get his hand raised at the end of it. So I don't know that Marab can push him to the point that he's actually going to get that finish. And if he does, I think it will be that final minute or two of the third round. I know we're splitting hairs here, but we're talking a two and a half round mark. I don't think Marab comes out and marks Jose Aldo in the first minute of round three because we've seen Jose make it a full 12 minutes before he starts to slow down. So even if we account for Marab having a higher pace and not getting death touched by Jose Aldo at some point throughout the fight and he does maybe get a finish, I expect it would be very, very late. So I think the over two and a half makes some sense here. Luke Rockhold taking on Paulo Costa. One and a half here for these big boys. Over one and a half is minus 110. Under one and a half is minus 105. I'm going to have to side with violence here on the under. I know it looks like some money has come in on the over, and I kind of get it, but I think Luke Rockhold has a big advantage if he gets on top in the grappling. I think Luke Rockhold's chin is one of my favorite things in the world to bet against. I just hate this price tag. I wish I could get you know a good position on the opposite side of it like I did against Jan. Paulo Costa, the way he fights, he blitzes forward. We've seen that be effective. We've seen that work against Luke Rockhold, and it's not a matter of Luke Rockhold's defense getting better or maybe him being a little bit more, I don't know, maybe the time off has helped him heal, helped his body recover. I just think he's at that age where there's only so much you can do. I doubt he can take a 15-minute beating from Paulo Costa, so unless he plays a very technical fight where he kicks and runs, I don't think this fight is going to be without its engagements. And whether that's Luke Rockhold winning on the ground or whether that's Polo Costa nuking him in a, in a boxing exchange in close, I think it probably happens sooner than later. Neither of these guys like to get paid by the minute. Both of them have high, high finishing upside. And both of them have really tough weight cuts. They are massive guys at 185. So I could see either guy getting taken out of here in this spot. And I think under one and a half is the only way I could look for it. Main event time, Kamaru Usman taking on Leon Rocky. Edwards total at four and a half. The over is minus 155. The under is plus 135. And again, I would have to look violence here in this spot. No two fights are the same. And in the first fight, 
Usman was much, much more of a pure grappler at that point. Leon had a big striking advantage. So Usman just kind of abused that wrestling game. And he held him down for 15 minutes. We have seen Leon Edwards improve in the wrestling. However, we've also seen him gas out the deeper fights goes. Again, we're at elevation. And we're talking one of the high-paced, you know, grapplers. The premier grapplers the UFC has to offer in Kamaru Usman. If he wants to go back to that grappling game, yeah, he can probably just grind out a 25-minute decision against Leon. But what Usman has been doing lately is putting a stamp on his legacy and just killing people in there. I think he's going to want to strike. All that work that he's been doing, getting better with his striking, showing off his power. I don't think he just abandons that for this fight. He could, don't get me wrong, but I think he'll be willing to get in there for a big exchange or two before he gets clipped and rocked and goes, oh, maybe I should wrestle now. I just think, I don't know that Leon Edwards can last 25 minutes with the pace that Usman's going to put on him. His best path to, path to victory is going to be a big shot that he lands early, kind of like he, get, he did against Bilal. Bilal was able to dig deep and power through that and carry on, so... Usman might be able to as well, but I think Leon needs a finish to win this fight, and I think Usman absolutely can finish Leon the deeper this fight goes. So getting plus money under four and a half, the way these two guys are, well, I guess the way Usman at least has been fighting, Leon doesn't fight very often. <laughs> I would be leaning on the under. I'd be looking for violence in the main event. That is the total takedown, folks. Make sure you subscribe here to Pub Sports Radio. Do me a favor, give us a share, hit that like button on your way out the door. We'll see you tomorrow for the undefeated post-weigh-in show. Let's roll.